Hello and welcome to a video presentation on estimating with decimals. Here's what you'll learn. How to estimate sums, differences, products, and quotients of decimal numbers. Now when an exact answer to a problem isn't required, we can use an estimate. Estimation gets us fairly close to an actual answer. Some words that let you know an estimated answer is acceptable are about, approximately, and of course estimate. Now there's a common error a lot of people make when they estimate, so let's get that out in the open right now and address it. Many people believe estimating is figuring out an exact answer and then rounding your answer. However, it's just the opposite of that. What you want to do is round the numbers you'll be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing to get an estimated answer. You see, if it was easy to determine an exact answer with the original numbers, there'd be no need to find an estimated answer. You'd just have the exact answer. Here's an example. Suppose you had $7 in your pocket and you need to buy a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread. Do you have enough money to stop at the store? Well, if you have some idea of the cost of a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread, you could decide if you can stop at the store on your way home or if you need to stop at the bank first. If you know milk costs around $3 a gallon and bread costs about $2.50 a loaf, you can quickly figure out you have enough money without knowing the actual prices of the items. You only need around five or six dollars, so seven dollars will cover the cost. That's an estimation. Now, when we estimate with decimals, the idea is to do away with the decimal portion of our numbers. It is much easier calculating or estimating answers using integers. In fact, estimating should be easy. That's its purpose. It allows us to calculate an approximate answer quickly that is close to but not necessarily the same as the exact answer. You should always look at estimating as something you can perform without a calculator. Because if you had a calculator handy all the time, you would never need to estimate. You could find the exact answer each and every time. Estimating addition and subtraction problems with decimals involves rounding the numbers that you're adding or subtracting. So let's take a moment to refresh ourselves on the rules for rounding. When we round decimal numbers, we typically round to the nearest integer. Let's use 43.28 as an example. The integer portion of our number here is everything before the decimal, so it's the number 43. When we round, we have to look at the number directly to the right of the portion we want to keep. In this case, it's the number 2, and we're going to ignore the 8. The 8 is not going to figure into our rounding at all. If this number is 4 or less, we will leave the integer as it is. If this number is 5 or more, we will round up to the next higher integer. So in this case, 43.28 rounded to the nearest integer stays as 43. Now let's round 11.637 to the nearest integer. The integer portion of our number is everything before the decimal, so it's the number 11. And when we round, we have to look at the number directly to the right of the portion we want to keep. In this case, it's the number 6, and we're going to ignore the 3 and the 7. If this number is 4 or less, we will leave our number as 11. If this number is 5 or more, we will round up to 12. So 11.637 rounded to the nearest integer is going to be 12. Now let's look at some examples. Let's estimate 53.5 plus 10.27 to the nearest integer. Let's start by writing the problem down vertically. I can write it down vertically or horizontally. I just chose vertically this time. 53.5 plus 10.27. Since the problem asks for an estimate, we need to round our numbers to the nearest integer. 53.5 rounds to 54 because a 5 will round our integer up. So we'll use 54 for the first number. 
10.27 rounds to 10 because a 2 is less than 5, so our integer portion will just remain as 10. So we're going to add 54 and 10 together. So 53.5 plus 10.27 is about 64. Very easy to add 54 and 10 in our heads. The actual answer is 63.77, so our estimate is very good indeed. Now let's estimate 13.3 minus 27.9 to the nearest integer. Let's start by writing the problem down horizontally this time. 13.3 minus 27.9. And since the problem asks for an estimate, we need to round our numbers to the nearest integer. 13.3 will round to 13 because a 3 is less than 5. So the first number will be 13. 27.9 will round to 28 because a 9 rounds up, so our second number is 28. Now we can subtract 13 minus 28. I'm going to use SSDD by changing this into an addition problem to make it easier to do. Now if you're not familiar with how to change subtraction to addition and you've never heard of my SSDD method before, you may want to view my lesson on subtracting integers. It'll make this problem easier. 13 minus 28 becomes 13 plus a negative 28 as an addition problem. Now that we have an addition problem, SSDD tells us to find the difference between these numbers since the signs on the 13 and the 28 are different. 28 minus 13 is 15. So we'll write down 15 as part of our answer. Now we have to figure out what sign it is. Our answer takes the sign of the larger number. 28 is larger than 13 and the 28 is negative. So our answer will be negative 15. And the actual answer is negative 14.6. So once again, our estimate is very good. Now let's estimate 22.7 times 7.45 to the nearest integer. Now when estimating multiplication and division problems, we don't necessarily round. We may end up rounding, but not necessarily. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to use something called compatible numbers. And compatible numbers are numbers close to the original numbers, but they're numbers that are easy for you to work with. The numbers that are easy for you to work with may be different than the numbers that are easy for me to work with. So we might get different estimations in our answers. First of all, let's start by writing down the problem. 22.7 times 7.45. And let's go ahead and round to start. We'll turn 22.7 into 23. And we'll use 7 for 7.45. But is 23 times 7 easy to do in your head? Well, if it is, then you should go ahead and use those numbers. You'll get a very accurate estimate. But if you're like most people, multiplying 23 and 7 in your head is a little difficult. So I would be inclined to use 20 for 22.7. And since I lowered my first number quite a bit, I think I'll increase the second number a little bit to balance that out. So let's go ahead and use 8 for 7.45 instead of 7. Now I can multiply 20 and 8 in my head very easily to get 160. And the actual answer is 169.115. So our estimate turns out to be very good. Now let's estimate 38.5 divided by negative 8.251 to the nearest integer. Start by writing down the problem, 38.5 divided by negative 8.251. Let's go ahead and round to start by using 39 for 38.5 and negative 8 for negative 8.251. Now I can't divide 39 by negative 8 in my head very easily. So I'm probably not going to use those numbers. You're probably not going to use those numbers. But if you could use those numbers, use them. Our estimates will be different, but they'll be close. I can divide 40 by negative 8 very easily, though. 
So let's use compatible number 40 instead of 39. So I'm going to change the first number to 40. 40 divided by 8 is 5, so I'll write down my 5. And a positive divided by a negative is going to give me a negative. So my estimate is negative 5. Now if you whipped out your calculator, the actual answer is negative 4.666. So again, our estimate of negative 5 is very good. Now let's do a word problem. Roger needs to fill his gas tank for a long trip. His tank's almost empty, but he knows it holds 21 gallons. Gas currently costs $3.79 per gallon. Roger has $75 in his wallet. Does he have enough cash to fill his tank? Well, we need to create an expression to solve first. We know Roger's car holds 21 gallons. If it's almost empty, we can assume it will take almost 21 gallons to fill his tank. The cost of buying gas is the number of gallons pumped multiplied by the cost for each gallon. So in our case, we'll have 21 gallons times $3.79. Now that we have our expression, we can estimate the cost for Roger to fill up his tank. Now let's leave 21 as 21 for the moment. And let's round 3.79 to 4. So we've got 21 times 4. Now it might be easy for many people to multiply 21 and 4 to get $84, and that's just fine. But I'd like to suggest a slight change to the numbers. Since we increased 3.79 slightly to 4, our estimate will be much closer to the actual answer if we decrease the other number just a wee bit. So let's use 20 instead of 21. And the problem becomes much easier too, because 20 times 4 is really easy to do. It gives us $80 as the answer. The actual answer? $79.59. So again, our estimate is very good. Since we estimate Roger needs $80 to fill up, $75 is not enough. Roger does not have enough cash to fill his tank. I want to end with a couple helpful hints on using compatible numbers. When you find it necessary to use compatible numbers for your multiplication and division problems, remember, it's always best to change only one number when possible. If you have to change both numbers, try to increase one and decrease the other. Compatible numbers should be as close to the actual numbers as possible in order for your estimate to be most accurate. Keep those tips in mind. And congratulations, you've learned how to estimate sums, differences, products, and quotients of decimal numbers.